Hey guys, Lucas here, back again for another round of street photography with my trusty Ricoh GR2. Today, the video will not be as technical and specific to like the gear and settings and stuff. Instead, I got, want to give you guys five tips for street photography, and I guess in general for photography, that you can apply to your own creative work. Now, first, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and also leave any comments that you may have. I will be going through and answering the questions personally if I can. Now, today we're going to explore Shibuya. The light is really nice, so follow me. We're going to get cracking. All right, so the very first tip is really basic, really simple, totally fundamental, and you've probably heard me say it before, and that is take your time. It's very important in street photography to go slow, and you've heard me say this in a, another way, which is work the scene. That's the same idea. That goes into more into the detail of moving around, but even more generally, you want to go slow. You want to take a photo, wait for something. If a scene has potential, like the one behind me that we're going to shoot in a second, it might need a subject. You might need to wait a little while for the subject. You might need to leave and come back. But the point is to put the time in. Take your time, put in the legwork, Street photography doesn't happen in one click in two seconds. I mean, it can, you know, there are photographers out there that do it that way, but by and large, you gotta put the time in. So don't hurry, take your time. And so what I'm gonna do here, I like this, this composition with these, these kind of two escalators and this passage here, and it looks really cool and impressive. The problem is, there's no subject. It's just a nice scene, nice light and lines, but it needs a person in there. Now. People do come through here, believe it or not. I've seen it with my own eyes. It just doesn't happen very often. And I'm gonna wait as long as it takes. Now we might not roll the camera, you know, roll video the whole time I'm waiting because that will not make for an interesting video, 10 minutes of me waiting. But to get the shot, it's gonna take me a little bit. Okay, so patience. Patience and put the time in. All right, so I'm pretty happy with what I got. I'm not 100% like finally happy. I would definitely want to come back and keep shooting this. I, I, like I said, I've shot it a few times before. I don't have the perfect photo. So I'm going to put more time in. I'm going to take my time on another occasion. But for today, we're going to keep going. Look for another spot for tip number two. And so the next tip is don't be afraid, right? Don't worry about what is gonna happen or what, you know, obviously within reason. If you're in some place that you feel is unsafe for street photography, then maybe you shouldn't be doing it. But most people that you're gonna encounter on the street are totally nice, they're totally cool, they're often even just oblivious to photography. They don't care what you're doing. And actually that, that kind of highlights is something that's actually sort of tangent to the main point here which is to have that positive attitude when you're doing street photography. That's my tip number two. But something else that comes to mind is if you're photographing people that are just standing there, they're gonna be a little bit more surprised, like your random passersby. While if you photograph people that are doing something, like this guy I was just shooting who was um, delivering booze to some bars around here, you know, he's busy with what he's doing. So not only is he less likely to even care about what I'm doing, but if he does notice me, it's much easier for me to make it clear, well, I'm just photographing you because you're interesting. And it's more apparent why he's interesting. So in general, I think it's important to have mm, like a good reason to do the photography that you're doing, and that will give you the confidence to do it, right? If you feel like maybe I shouldn't be taking this photo, or I don't really know why I'm taking this photo, you cannot explain that to your subject, then you have to think more deeply about your photography, okay? So by having that mentality, I can distill it down to don't be afraid. You won't be afraid of shooting the things you wanna shoot if you have these good and deeper reasons for it, okay? So that was a nice little example right off the cuff. Um, I love shooting people working in Tokyo, like construction, delivery people, chefs, cooks, whatever. There's a lot of that in my work because I find these people more interesting than the randomer just standing there. But when I started doing photography and street photography, I did spend a considerable, considerable amount of time just shooting people that were just regular, normal people. Because in the beginning, I found that just the act of photography was so magical to me that even just the regular, most mundane person captured on camera was 
like, wow, that, I couldn't believe I did that, you know, that I had the, the guts to do that. But over time, what I saw is that I don't need the guts. You know, I don't feel brave. I'm just not afraid of doing it because it's something totally normal to me. It's become normal by having those ideas over time. Okay? So that is tip number two. We're going to keep going. Yes, Kyle? Kakoi. Arigato. I think that illustrates my point very well, right? I didn't, you know, I, would, I thought we were going to move on, but there was another example. So these guys are doing something, they're building something. I just held up my camera, the guy smiled. I said, yeah, you look cool. He posed, and then I, after he posed, because I want candid shots, you know, I let people pose. I'm not going to tell them, hey, don't pose, be natural. That doesn't make, that doesn't work. So you let him pose, and then I kind of stuck around and I took a few more. It wasn't the most interesting scene, I admit. I took one or two, I decided this isn't really great, I moved on. But I wasn't really shy to do it because I felt like I had a compelling reason to photograph this scene. It, was, it just came naturally, okay? So don't be afraid. So we're going to a spot now that I've used countless times before, and some of you who've watched me on YouTube before will probably recognize this spot. But I want to use it today to illustrate another really good point well, I think it's good. An important tip is that is, that is generally, I'm, I can sum it up as get closer. But more broadly, it's work the scene in terms of distance. And we talked about work the scene many times before. Let's go over to the crosswalk. But specifically here, I want to think about it in terms of a wide, a medium, and then a very tight shot that, you know, with a fixed lens, a wide angle lens, gives three very different results in basically the same scene. So we have this scene, and I said generally get closer, but more nuanced. You know, I don't like, I'm trying to make the tips like easy to remember, but actually the tips are always gonna be more nuanced than a simple thing like get closer. So first things first, I'm gonna start with a wide shot, which with a nice 28 millimeter equivalent lens is easy. And with the wide shot, okay, I'm getting a lot of stuff in here, and I'm still trying to, you know, think less is more, I'm trying to, compose less in the scene, make it simpler. But it's a little bit too much. There's a lot going on, okay? It's looking pretty good, but there is a lot going on. So I'm gonna get a little bit closer. And that's what this tip is about. And if I move in, I can more easily start to frame things out and I can simplify the scene, okay? Here I have this arrow in the top right corner and then the whole cool scene everywhere. You know, all, all around it. And then of course people coming through, which is the main point of this, of this shot. Nice, that was cool. I like these two uh, high school students. Okay, so I'm getting a little bit closer and think, okay, maybe I can get a shot just here, just the railing here and the grid around it, which is now very minimal, and very simple compared to the one before. There's even less going on. And then I need a person, there we go. Okay. That looks nice. By the way, for those wondering, I am using snap focus right now because it's kind of hard for the camera to focus here because of the, the backlighting and the fact that people are moving through the scene. And specifically, I am on five meters and F4. So I have a pretty deep zone from about three meters to, um, you know, off to infinity, which we're not seeing here anyway. And these are coming out nice and sharp. Okay, so that's getting closer, but I can get even closer. I can get closer over here. I can think, okay, if I get right on top of this surface, what does that look like, right? So now the camera is right on the scene. It's not even, you know, looking at it, it's in the scene. I can also do that up here. And same thing, I get this really cool reflection effect. And at this point, I would have to wait for a person to come up who's actually tall enough to appear above the thing. And that, oh, maybe just missed one there. But that actually goes back to Tip number one, which was take your time. And that's always true. And that's why that was tip number one, because it's the most fundamental thing. You gotta take your time. You gotta go slow. Oh, 
Okay, so the first three tips, which were take your time, get closer, and don't be afraid, are more about how to shoot in the streets. And those are great, valid, and important. But the next two, I really want to go into more kind of how you think of your photography and how you approach it. And these two tips are going to be a little bit contradictory. And the first one is you have to find your vision. You have to kind of realize what is it that interests you and boil it down to that and then kind of be consistent. Not necessarily forcing yourself, but you might photograph particular things or subjects in a particular way to kind of develop like what I like to call a heuristic. So for example, um, I have a, a series that I do on bicycles in Tokyo and I find bicycles and I always photograph them directly from the side with a particular environment and so you know that's my project there. There's like a heuristic. I see a bicycle, it has to match my criteria for the shot, otherwise it's not part of this project, right? So that goes into the idea where eventually if you do this enough you might start developing projects. You're gonna, you're like a collector. You're gonna find different things that are interesting put them into little boxes and over time you realize oh this is crystallizing into a particular project and by doing that you'll find your vision your voice so to speak okay um, and at, over time you develop a style and the style will be, will be consistent to that project and so on and so on and that brings me to tip number five which is don't always do the same thing <laughs> You want to go beyond what you're doing and you want to try to always think outside the box and not paint yourself into a corner. This is especially true when you see stuff online, maybe on Instagram or elsewhere, and you think, oh, that's really cool, and you start to emulate that style because you like it, and then your photos just end up looking like somebody else's photos. That's not good either. So you always want to try to kind of find th ways to, to go beyond what you've already been doing, and one way to do that is to not just focus all your energy and interest on photography only. Me, personally, I get a ton of inspiration from other media, of course, films, movies. Uh, many of them, you know, I, people who follow my work know that I like things like sci-fi, sci but even beyond that, I watch lots of different kinds of movies in different genres, and I pay attention to the framing, the composition, the storytelling, the color grading, all that stuff. I also take ideas from other media like video games or comic books, or even music can inspire a certain way of producing images that uh, goes beyond just the visual form of photography. So I do, of course, follow certain photographers that I love, and I take inspiration from their work, but I take a lot of inspiration about my creative approach and creative thinking from other media. That, and that is tip number five. Go beyond photography to find inspiration in other medias. Okay, guys, I hope you found those five tips useful. The first three were a little bit more like pragmatic, hands-on, and the last two, I didn't want them to be those simple, bite-sized, you know, things you heard a million times, use the rule of thirds, you know, that kind of stuff. I wanted to give you guys something to chew on, something that you're going to have to think about that's going to make you maybe reconsider how you do your photography to give you a different perspective on what you're actually doing as a photographer and a specific history photographer. Okay? I hope you found them useful. As always, if you have any questions, please put the comments below, please like the video, please subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you guys next time.